today I'm going to be focused on plugin loading and how I like using something called the facade pattern in almost all of the applications that I try to build. We're going to be building in C Sharp today and using a NuGet package called AutoFac. Let's jump over to Visual Studio. All right, so I am back in Visual Studio here. I'm just going to get a console app created. So we have a project here, brand new console application. And I mentioned I want to be talking about something that I call the facade pattern. Um, I didn't coin the term, I didn't invent it, but it's just something that I use heavily. And I talk about plugin systems a lot because a lot of how I design software applications is really about um, almost having like a skeleton framework as the core app and then pushing out a lot of dependency specific code into plugins. Then I dynamically load those at runtime um, and I can put them behind something called a facade that will do the right thing for us. The facade itself is a class that we will implement um, and it adheres to an interface. And as a caller of the facade, you don't actually need to know that if it's a facade. In fact, that's the point. Um, <laughs> it's sort of masquerading as um, something that performs some task for you. And actually behind the scenes, we have loaded plugins that do different things, have maybe different implementations. Um, we're going to be going through an example that has different sources of data or object creation. So we're going to check that out today. And that happens behind the scenes of the facade. And as the caller, you don't need to know that's happening. Um, and it keeps it nice and transparent to you. One of the the things that I really like about this pattern is that it lets us design applications without having to think about the details behind the scenes. And, uh, and then we can actually extend these applications with more functionality a lot of the time without having to break apart existing parts of the code base. Uh, sometimes we can just drop in um, whole new DLLs and dynamically load those plugins and have that functionality um, sort of get dropped in, which is super cool. I've I've definitely seen criticisms to this type of approach too, like when people go debugging things, um, when you're not expecting to come across something like a facade, because it's a, a level of indirection and can sort of split from like one class that you might be expecting into, you know, it's a, it's sort of this interface across potentially multiple instances of different implementations. If you have a bug somewhere, and that's kind of the point that you get to as you're debugging it, you might go, oh crap, I totally wasn't expecting that I'm going to have to go now check out like, you know, 10 different variations of what I thought was one type of implementation. So um, definitely a criticism of it, but I personally like having the separation and if I go implementing tests and things and I can test um, the individual implementations as necessary, and then maybe do some type of functional testing over, um, you know, the set of loaded plugins as well to, to ensure that they adhere to the right patterns and, uh, and expectations. So that's a super high level idea of what I mean by facades and the types of plugins uh, and, and that kind of loading that we're going to be looking at today. And I'm going to dive into um, kind of an example here that's a bit of an evolution for me um, because, as I said, I build a lot of systems with plugin loading. And more recently, I kind of feel that I found a pattern that I'm kind of happy with. So um, let's let's talk about the facade and um, sort of implementations we're going to look at today. I want to keep it super simple um, because a lot of the time when I do something like this, I might be building out dependency specific implementations. So for example, if uh, we had a facade for a repository pattern, um, I might have a plugin with an implementation that's loading from a SQLite database. And then I want a plugin that's able to load from, maybe it's also a SQLite implementation, but uh, another SQLite database. And perhaps I have a whole second completely different implementation of that plugin um, meets the same interface and everything, but it's going to be connecting to a, you know, a MySQL uh, server um, and pulling data from, from that as a repository. So that's generally how I end up seeing this kind of stuff um, in my own, in my own work, but we're going to, we're going to skip that part. I don't want to spend time connecting to databases, um, setting all that kind of stuff up. It kind of isn't really relevant for um, the parts that I want to talk about today. I end up finding myself saying, okay, like, let's use a repository pattern. So we're going to talk about a facade that um, is going to 
uh, wrap multiple repositories, but they're just going to be in memory, um, simple repositories that wrap a, uh, like a very, I don't know, simple object for us. So let's, let's talk about that object might look like, I'll call it my object, super easy. Actually, let's use a record. We'll have some property on the record. Okay. And then we're going to start by having an in memory implementation of a repository. So what we'll do is, um, we might do like a private read only, I read only collection of my object. Look at that autocomplete. It just knows what I want. We'll implement a method that's something like I enumerable get all objects. Okay. And just to give you another example, when I have repository patterns like this, I might pass in something like a, um, a filtering context or something, and then allow the repositories to do adequate filtering. So I could implement that in SQL or SQLite or, um, you know, in some document database store. Um, and I could have that specific to the implementation. So in this case, it's in memory. If we wanted filtering, I could do something like link or something like that. But we're going to skip that. It's just going to return the objects that we pass in. So what we might do, um, and we'll show this with loading with autofac, is that perhaps we have different DLLs where um, we allow someone to create in uh, a repository. So we'll have an interface for it. And they can drop in those repository implementations. When these are created, they'll have a, a set of objects behind them. So let's go ahead and pull this out, this other file over here. Cool. So what does the facade actually look like? Going to be very similar to what we're looking at already. Um, so you might be going, this is kind of dumb. But once we start actually populating some data in here and calling it, you might see some of the benefits. So my object repository facade, and we are going to let it implement an I repository. And actually, when we get a little bit further ahead, I'm going to change some of these interfaces around, show you how I've been implementing it um, up to this point, and actually uh, a bit of a change to that pattern that I'm really happy about. And because I use it the same way in basically all of my projects, it seems like a nice refactor um, that I can go leverage and clean some stuff up. That pattern may not work well for you. You might not want to do that in your applications. That's totally cool. There's so many different ways to do all of this kind of stuff. And I feel like if you're watching anyone making content um, or people you work with, anytime someone's saying there's only one right way or like this one way is always wrong, um, I think that's incorrect. Um, <laughs> there's pros and cons to every decision we make. And uh, I think that what I'm about to describe works well for me. If it doesn't for you, that's totally cool. Let's hear about it in the comments, right? We're going to take in a collection of I repositories. Okay, so it's going to wrap a bunch of repositories. We pass in the collection of repositories. And again, this method is going to look very similar to the one above, except instead of going over the list of objects, we are going to ask all of the repositories. We're going to use link here just to keep it simple. Quick check at what we're doing here. This facade still implements this I repository, but when we construct it, it's allowed to take in more repositories and it doesn't care about the implementation. So this is a key part here. We're just using the same interface. It's going to ask, because it's a facade hiding the complexity here, it's going to ask every repository, hey, um, what objects do you have? And then it's just going to slap them all together in an enumerable for us and pass that back to the caller. Let's go ahead. Let's pull these out. Okay, so now we just have our program. And you'll see that I'm going to say I want to... We're going to do this in Autofac in just a moment. So we would new up a... Um, my object repository facade and i'm gonna put this in here first and we're going to extract it into dedicated plugins and show how that loading mechanism works with autofac but i want to show you how it looks before i do that refactor so you have a better understanding if you're not already familiar with autofac and how we can take advantage of this setup so each repository takes in let's do one repository where we have um the names have letters in them, and then the second repository, they're going to have numbers in them. Okay, so that's one repository, and then maybe we have a second one, like I said, which would be numbers. What we'll do is we'll show how to set this up in Autofac, have these pulled out into different assemblies, load it all up. If you check when I hover over this, I mean, I should do this. This is how it will look when we start using it from Autofac. It's just going to be an iRepository, right? 
when we call this, and it has get all objects, if you're just looking at it from this perspective, the fact that it's an I repository, we can't tell that it's a facade um, because we're only caring that it has this interface on it. So we don't know about the implementation. Obviously, we do because we're looking at this line above, but if you were to have this somewhere else and someone's calling get all objects on an I repository, facade or not, you don't know. That's the point. That's the beauty of it. We run this. Okay, so obviously you're not printing anything out, but if I were to hover over this in super small text, if you can't see, because I don't think I can zoom in on this bottom portion, if I go to all objects, results view, you can see, or maybe not, squint a little bit, but I have six objects here with the letters first and then the numbers after. So the facade did its job. It aggregated all the data for us. Beautiful. Now let's do the next step and start pulling this into AutoFAC. But that's going to be a conversation for the next video. So if you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns about what you've seen so far with facade patterns, please let me know in the comments, and I'm happy to get back to you and have a conversation about it. So if you thought this video was useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and of course, like I said, we'll put this next video up here for you to see, or maybe over here.